All right, folks, we're starting this one off in motion because I got to break the news to you. Pretty, pretty straightforward. I think leader bike riders need to go ride small bikes, man. But let me explain what I mean by leader bike riders need to ride small bikes. So leader bike guys, man, especially here in the States, they're uh, typically highway warrior types, kind of low skilled, I'm not going to lie. Most of the time, they don't really go out on track. They bought the leader bike because they just want to go rip it around on the highway. And I will be honest, if your main goal is to go fast on the highway, a little bike like this is not going to be the right choice. Well, let's just carve this corner right here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's not going to be the right choice, right? The thing you're going to want to do with a big bike is go really fast in a straight line, and the little bike's not going to do that. But the thing is, the little bike is going to teach you so much more. I really think that guys who are used to riding big bikes, really you're doing yourself a disservice by not riding a little bike at least a little bit of the time. Because what happens is when you take the fear component out of a motorcycle, which let's be honest, top end leader bikes, you're not riding them anywhere close to their potential on the street. You know, this RC390, I can get pretty close to the limit on the street, kind of, you know, like I've actually raced an Ninja 400 and I used to have a track day Mule RC390, so I kind of can feel out the limits of this thing on the street a little bit. And those limits are so much lower, so you really can get a much better sense of what the bike is doing. On a leader bike, on the street anyways, when you're carving up twisties, you can't really feel what the bike is doing, right? Like, you can only really feel what those motorcycles are doing when they're close to the limit on, this, on, the, uh, on the track, right? And most guys have nowhere near the skill to ride a leader bike anywhere near the limit at the track, myself included. The actual, honest to God, limit of a leader bike on the track, that's reserved for the likes of Jorge Martin and Alvaro Bautista and Fabio Quartararo. That is not for us mere mortals, even average club racer types. We like to believe we can really go out there and wring the neck of an R1, but you just can't, you know? And so what the little bike allows you to do is even in a street context like this, you'll find yourself breaking a little bit later, picking up the throttle a little bit sooner. And to be honest, the experience is really fun. This little RC390, we recently put it on RS10 tires, a very sticky set of rubber. And I'm just having a ball with this thing, man. We're gonna do a bunch of track day content in comparison with it. And I'm super excited for it. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Even there, you can see I can overtake pretty easily on this bike. Hey guys, really quick, I wanted to shout out a super cool promotion we've got going on. If you become a member over on shop.yamanube.co and you sign up for our all giveaway subscription package, we will send you a free pair of EVS gloves. All you need to do is go to shop.yamanube.co, sign up and become a member on the all giveaway subscription package, and we will reach out to you and figure out your sizing and which gloves that you want from EVS. Don't miss out. Try to ride it like a complete goon and enjoy the thing, you know? <laughs> That's a ton of fun. You're basically wide open everywhere and you actually get to change gears. We're on a leader bike. You don't really change gears much on the street. You're kind of in first and second the entire time, even on your average twisty roads. Whereas this bike, you actually get to change gears, get to have some fun with it. And I honestly got to think that leader bike guys aren't willing to admit that the little bikes are more fun. You know, it is more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. You don't really want to take a leader bike out and just kind of poodle around in first gear because honestly, they don't want to do that. Like whenever I ride the uh, H2 or an R1 or something like that on the street, the thing is kind of angry whenever you're in first gear just chugging along. And some bikes play a fun trick, like the Ducati Street Fighter V4S. You know, that bike will do slower speeds because it's brand new and Ducati's done some type of magic that they sprinkled all over the bike and, uh, you know, basically gotten to the point where it's actually docile down low and super fun up top. Don't know how they pull that off, but I digress. The little bike can teach you so much more. You can approach the limits so much better. And I am reminded of an article I saw on Revzilla that I believe was written by my good buddy Alex over at the Yamaha Champ School, where he downsized to a Ninja 400, started riding it on track, became a much better rider. Because we have to be honest with ourselves, guys. We have to be honest that most of us are riding bikes that are way beyond our skill sets, right? If you have a year or two years of experience and you're on a Yamaha R1, you don't really know what the hell you're doing. I don't really care what you have to say. 
day. I don't care. That, oh, but yeah, I'm, I'm the fastest guy on my twisty road group ride on the weekends. That means sweet F all. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It means virtually nothing to be quote unquote quick. You got to go out to the track. You have to time your laps. You have to see meaningful improvements. What's your stamina like? What's your endurance like? What kind of lap times can you produce? Are you consistent in those lap times? Or are you three seconds delta every other lap? You know, it makes a big, big difference. And to have a bike like this in the stable. The other thing about these little bikes that I know for some of you isn't really a big deal, myself included, it's, you know, not the biggest thing I think about when it comes to motorcycling, is the cost, right? Um, little bikes like this, they hardly use anything in terms of tires and gas. I mean, right now, I have been wailing this RC390 around before I got on camera, right? I decided to go and have some fun with it on a nice little twisty roads here in Austin, and I'm getting 55 miles to the gallon. Prius be damned, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And the other cool thing is tire wear too. Not only are the tires cheaper on these things, but you're gonna have to replace them much less often because you're just not really, you know, railing the bike around and using tires in the same way that a, a big power bike does. And when you jump on the gas on a big power motorcycle, you know, even if you're not riding it on a fast pace, that horsepower going through the rubber just tears it up, you know? Whereas a little bike like this, it really can withstand quite a bit of abuse. And I've seen guys run the same set of tires on a little bike for a year on track, on road, thousands of miles, dozens of track days. They just don't get worn out that much. You know, we're uh, getting ready to pilot out our endurance it's Ninja 400 for its first round here at CMRA and you know my guy Keith who's uh, kind of our team lead and principal kind of managing the bike a little bit Conti tire rep he says they're probably just gonna run one set of Contis for a six-hour endurance event on that bike and granted that is a continental tire thing but that just gives you an idea of how little these bikes cost to run so Low cost of entry, brand new RC390 is like 6200 bucks out the door in most places. Low cost of ownership too, that just makes it a lot more fun. And I gotta be honest, your options nowadays for small displacement sport bike are kind of spoiled for choice. This R3, the, the, this bike right here, the RC390, it is so sweet, man. This thing has, you know, little clickers from the factory, it looks really cool, the ergonomics are, you know, properly dialed in for a little sport bike like this, it looks cool. You know, I really don't feel like I'm missing out on much by owning the RC390. And again, this isn't my bike, this is a giveaway bike, and I have several motorcycles. But, you know, even me, a very high-level enthusiast with motorcycling, I have a Ninja 400 that I race, right? That goes to show you that I practice what I preach, guys. When it comes to the kind of bikes that I own, I walk the walk and I talk the talk. I literally raced the Ninja 400 in 2020. I'm back at it again this year. I love the small displacement category and I'm not alone in my sentiments there. You know, friend of the channel and maybe me personally as well, I'm not sure I haven't asked him, but Ari Henning, who uh, I chat to from time to time, you know, a lot of you guys know that he is a big advocate and enthusiast of the little bikes. He's uh, most famous for his CBR 300 builds and hot rodding little 250s and stuff like that. The man is bonafide small bike fetishist <laughs> no no harm met area i'm just calling it like i see it you know um because i think at the end of the day once you've experienced big power and yeah like for me i got an h2 and a turbo busa once you've experienced a lot of the big power stuff you want to come back to basics on motorcycling you want to come back to the reason we all fell in love with it in the first place, which is just the simple pleasures of riding. And the little bikes really provide that. I just feel such gratitude when I'm on the little bikes. And, you know, to have complete dominion over a bike feels so good, too. As a very experienced rider, very experienced with high-powered motorcycles, you know, it's nice to be able to inflict maximum disrespect on a little bike. You know, to be honest, that's when you can get yourself into trouble, especially with me with uh, tiny small displacement dirt bikes. That seems to be when I get hurt the most. <laughs> my last off was at a motocross track. I was on my KTM 250 four stroke. That is not by any means a little bike or a slow bike, even though a lot of motocross guys like to give me grief because it's not a 450. Yeah, the, the little bikes on dirt are the ones you gotta be careful of. Those are the widow makers. <laughs> I remember in 2021, I uh, was on a CRF 110 and I was just at the little kiddos track. It was like off time for them to ride and totally went over a berm, scorpioned myself, just ate so much dookie that day on the CRF 110. And from that day on, I was like, you know what? These little dirt bikes, that's the ones you gotta look out for. It's a lot like 
you know, humans. It's not the big ones you gotta be scared of, it's the little ones, the crazy ones. <laughs> the, the unpredictable little guys, you know, those are the ones that are scary. The, the meth head tweaker on the corner, it's a lot scarier than the big buff bodybuilder at the bar, trust me, especially here in Austin. So guys, I really think that if you're a big bad leader bike rider, you love just gooning it on the highway, big power sort of stuff, jump back on a little bike. I'm not saying to go and buy one, I think that, you know, it's a big commitment to go and buy one of these motorcycles. What I'm saying is make sure that you give yourself the bandwidth to, to ride a little bike. Try to really immerse yourself in the little bike spirit and just jump a leg over one. Swing a leg, jump a leg over it, jump on one of these bikes again and you'll feel that kind of old school passion of motorcycling that you had when you started. And you could just, again, like we're, we're here in traffic, I could just maximum wide open throttle, grab another gear wide open. Oh my goodness, all the way to there. And I've barely caught up to this car in front of me. And that's a really fun experience. It's a really interesting and fun experience to be able to do that on a little bike. So that's my spiel for today. I hope you enjoyed today's little vlog on the RC390. If you're a leader bike rider and you refuse to ride little bikes, let me know down in the comments below. Tell me why it is that you feel that your ego is going to be bruised so badly by riding a little bike that you just refuse to bring yourself to ride one of these bikes because I tell you what, they are a ton of fun. If you want the chance to win this RC390 that I am riding right now, hit the links down below to shop.yamadu.co, become a member. You get signed up for all of our giveaway bikes and a ton of amazing perks and features. You get 10% off on our store, 10% off on Twisted Road Rentals, and all kinds of access to exclusive content in our Discord server as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit here on today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Well, well, well. What do we have here? A mighty fine steel horse, if I ever did say so myself. They don't make these at the rodeo anymore. Let me just, <clears throat> just swing a leg over this bike. Now, if you want to see me spool some boost, got to click this video right over here. This year, Turbo Hibosa might be featured in the next video you see here on Yamanube. Tell you what, partner, I'm going to turn off the lights. I mean, this bike going to do some things.